John Makali. Yes, Give me the mic. For the opportunity you've granted me to also weigh in on this motion. Honorable Speaker, we are facing a constitutional moment where our constitution is being tested. At the outset, let me state that I have nothing as against the Deputy President or where he comes from. But Honorable Speaker, the Deputy President is not an ordinary person. The, ordinary, uh, the Deputy President is actually the second in command in our nation before he assumes office Article 74 of the Constitution requires him to take an oath of office. And Honorable Speaker, I have looked at the oath of office of the Deputy President. It requires him to be faithful to the Republic, to give counsel and advice to the President without fear or favor. Equally, the Deputy President is a ranking State Officer, and Article 74 of the Constitution requires, Article 75 of the Constitution, requires that in the conduct of a state officer, he needs to bring honor and dignity to this office he holds. Honorable Speaker, looking at the grounds that have been availed, I want to state here categorically, Honorable Speaker, that the Deputy President has violated the Constitution and is out of office. Why do I say that, Honorable Speaker? One, the Constitution of Kenya, which the people of Kenya gave to themselves, requires that Kenya is a unitary state, regardless of the regions it has. Equally, Article 10 of the Constitution puts national unity, patriotism, as a key component of our national values in the discharge of our duties. Several other times, and I want to speak to this very clearly, Honorable Speaker, when the Deputy President, the truthful man he says he is, attended a church service in Bungoma, and we actually requested that we had several other problems which needed to be handled, specifically blocked road programs, employment opportunities, the Deputy President, the truthful man that he is, told us on our faces that according to the votes which we got, whatever we had gotten was enough and we had no duty to keep on asking for more projects. That is the Deputy President who is supposed to be the principal assistant to the President and who is supposed to portray national unity. Equally, Honorable Speaker, the Deputy President yesterday clearly said, clearly said that the government that we have now, the Kenya Kwanzaa government, is a government of shareholders. Because he said the government was formed because of shareholding agreements. Once you become a Deputy President, you are the face of national unity. He cannot really keep invoking the promises which were made, the agreements which were made prior to the government being formed. What will happen to those, to those other, country, other, other, other areas which are not part and parcel of those particular agreements that were alleged to have been made? Equally, Honorable Speaker, the, the Deputy President has committed an offense, or is reasonably expected to have committed an offense. When he was asked in his visits, which he makes throughout the country, he said that he visited Keio Marakwet, he visited other parts of the country, and he has been given animals. And those animals, he has kept them at his home, and he now has a herd. Article 76 of the Constitution clearly indicates that when you receive a gift or a donation, you are supposed to donate it back to the Republic. You don't keep it up as, as you are reward at home. So looking at this Honorable Speaker, the Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya has committed a corruption offense for which he needs to go home. The Honorable Speaker, the Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya is supposed to be above board. He is supposed to be the number two citizen who needs to preach national unity. He is supposed to be the President in waiting. He is supposed to be actually the president in waiting, so that if anything happens, he is supposed to take over the reins of the country. Honorable Speaker, if we look at the utterances that have been made by the Deputy President, let us look at the Kemsa case. I've looked at the affidavit of, 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 of Dr. Andrew. It is very, very clear that the Deputy President was actually conflicted in the Kemsa 
supply case and Article 75 of the Constitution requires all state officers to avoid situations where they are in conflict of interest. And in leading this, the Deputy President should be at the forefront of avoiding situations where he falls in a situation where there's a conflict of interest. Taking into account all these graven grounds that have been made, I have no doubt on my mind, Honorable Speaker, that for his arrogance, that for his breach of the Constitution, that for his defiance, that for his statements, that for his conduct, he is not a truthful man as he pretends to be, and we cannot have such a person as the Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya. It is high time, Honorable Speaker, that we now seize the dragon of tribalism, we now seize the dragon of ethnicity, we now seize the dragon of regionalism, and slay it, and get our nation moving forward. Honorable Speaker, I rise to support this particular motion and say the Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya must go and we have start up a fresh page. I support Honorable Speaker. Julia Sole Sunguli.